So thinking about the anterior pituitary. Now just to remind ourselves of the basic anatomy, we have the hypothalamus, which is part of the brain. Then we have the pituitary stalk. And then we have the pituitary gland itself. And we remember that the pituitary gland was in two lobes. Two lobes of the gland. Now the anterior, or the front, you might remember was the adenohypophysis, glandular tissue. And the posterior, the posterior lobe, was the neurohypophysis. And remember there was neurons going from the hypothalamus down to the posterior lobe, the neurohypophysis. And the hypothalamus is part of the base of the brain, so this is the brain here. Now, the regulation of the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland is actually controlled by specialised hormones made in the brain. So really it's the hypothalamus, it's the brain that's controlling the, the whole physiological system. So there's an arterial supply goes into the hypothalamus and that divides into a network of capillaries. And this is the first network of capillaries in this system. So for this reason, it's called the primary capillary plexus. The primary capillary plexus. The primary plexus. But then what happens is this goes on down. So we've got an arterial supply in as you would expect, as that's normal. And then we've got a drainage there, but this is not drainage into the systemic venous circulation. This actually drains into another secondary plexus down here in the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland another group of capillaries and only then does it drain into the venous drainage. And this second plexus is called the secondary capillary plexus. So what's actually happening is the blood is going into the hypothalamus circulating through these capillaries, this primary capillary plexus in the hypothalamus. And instead of going back into the systemic venous circulation at this point, it doesn't. There's a specialist group of small veins take this blood down directly to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland without going through or without returning to the systemic circulation first. Only then does it go back into a vein. So this is a venous vessel here. And what this means is that the hypothalamus can produce small amounts of hormones called releasing hormones that can be absorbed into the blood supply here. So releasing hormones are produced in the hypothalamus. These releasing hormones then travel down this vein here directly to the anterior pituitary. And these releasing hormones will stimulate specific types of cells in the anterior pituitary, causing them to produce their trophic hormones. 
So we see that the first level of control of the endocrine system are the releasing hormones produced by the hypothalamus. These then travel directly to the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland, the adenohypophysis. And when the adenohypophysis is stimulated by the relevant releasing hormones, that will cause the anterior lobe to produce the range of trophic hormones. And it is these trophic hormones which will then go on and stimulate all of the other endocrine glands. And they will produce endocrine products. And it is the endocrine products of the endocrine glands that's going to inhibit the release of the initial releasing hormones, providing the negative feedback that ensures homeostasis of the levels of endocrine hormone in the blood. So maybe we'll just look at an example or two. One of the products produced by the hypothalamus is uh, thyrotrophin thyrotrophin releasing hormone so thyrotrophin releasing hormone is produced by the cells in the hypothalamus that travels down this small system of veins here. Now because these veins, or well, because these small, I've only drawn one vein, but because this, this system of small veins starts and ends in capillaries, for that reason they're called uh, portal veins. This is unusual, the only other example I can think of is between the gastrointestinal tract and the uh, liver. In fact they are the only two portal systems uh, that I know of anyway. So the thyrotrophin releasing hormone is produced up here in the hypothalamus and because it goes directly to the adenohypophysis it can only it doesn't need to be produced in large amounts just small amounts will be fine and that will stimulate cells in the adenohypophysis. Now there's a small group of cells in the adenohypophysis they're not actually there, but that represents a small group of cells. And the uh, small group of cells here are called uh, thyrotrophs. Thyrotrophs. And it's the thyrotrophs that produce the TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. That thyroid stimulating hormone then goes off in the, well you can see, you can see um, there's a good blood supply to the, to the adenohypophysis. So that TSH will go off directly into the systemic circulation, go to the thyroid gland where it will stimulate the production of thyroid hormone. So that's going to increase the amount of thyroid hormone. When the amount of thyroid hormone is increased, that will be detected in the hypothalamus. And as a result, the hypothalamus will produce less thyrotrophin releasing hormone. The only confusion here is the thyroid stimulating hormone and the, the thyrotrophin are really the, the same thing. So the Thyrotrophin releasing hormone stimulating the thyrotrophs, the specialist cells in the adenohypophysis. The thyrotrophs producing the thyroid stimulating hormone. The thyroid stimulating hormone going off systemically into the blood, stimulating the thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. Once enough thyroid hormone is produced, that's going to be detected by the hypothalamus which will in turn produce less thyrotrophin releasing hormone. And many of the other hormones work in the same way. The trophic hormones 
produced by the adenohypophysis work in a very similar way. So in the next video, we want to look at the specific examples of the trophic hormones and how their release is regulated. But this shows a good example. So we've got the thyrotrophin releasing hormone going down here, producing or stimulating the specialized thyrotrophs to release the thyroid stimulating hormone to stimulate the thyroid gland. The whole purpose of the system, and it just shows how critical it is to maintain very fine homeostatic regulation of the amounts of thyroid hormone in the blood. And this exquisite system of feedback and stimulation and inhibition is how that is maintained. And for most of us, that works very well most of the time. So right now, it's overwhelmingly likely you'll have exactly the right amount of thyroid hormone in your blood to stimulate metabolism and carry out the other functions of thyroid hormone. Not too much, not too little, just the right amount because it is exquisitely homeostatically regulated.